Hello everybody, or happy Boxing Day, if such a greeting exists. I'm not sure that it does now that I'm thinking about it. But anyway, it's Boxing Day. I hope you all had a nice Christmas yesterday. And today I'm going to get the first of my veg seeds sown today. Um, it's, as I say, it's Boxing Day, and that's the traditional day for sowing onion seeds. And that's what I'm going to get on with here. I've got a couple of types here in this, uh, in this box to, to get on with. Well, first of all, I want to get on and talk a little bit about um, seed sowing basics, first of all. Now, there are many gardeners out there and some, some will use a sieve, to so a sieve to sieve their soil or compost. Others won't. Some say you need to do it. I'm one of them. And others say you don't need to. I'm also one of them. Because you don't really need to, to sieve your compost, but I do it because it increases your strike rate and your germination rate of your seeds. I'll explain. If you've got a nice, fine, crumbly compost like this sieve stuff here, what that means is that when your seed settles in there, it's going to be surrounded by moist compost. That means that the seed coat on the actual tiny little seed is completely covered and wrapped around with moist compost, meaning that seed coat can soak that moisture in and therefore germinate better. If, on the other hand, you've got these sievings, which are big lumps, the seeds are just gonna fall through it. There's gonna be holes and cavities in there and your seeds won't necessarily get that nice even wetting all the way around and therefore you will get patchy germination. Now, there is another problem with these sievings that come out. And if I just give you a little cell tray like that, and you imagine a lump like this that I've just sieved out, and you put that on top of your seeds that you've sown individually into your little seed cells there. When the seedling pops its head up, it can't grow straight up and it's weak and feeble. It's just emerging from the seed. It's got a limited amount of food in there, but it's now got to divert its way around that lump and then up. So it's starting life has been hampered. So the seed has now come up, gone off to the left or right, and then gone up. So its initial part of its growth, it's bent. It's not a straight and true seedling. Some won't even get past those lumps. You know, some will, will not actually get, be able to get past them at all. So you're hampering what results you can get from your seeds. Now, if you've got and then let's say you've got cabbage seeds in a packet, you've got 2,000 of them. It's not as vitally important to do that, and that's why I say sometimes you don't really need to, to sieve your compost. But when you consider that some, let's say, tomato seeds, something like a crimson crush or a, a sun gold, we only get 10, pack, 10 seeds in a packet for a few quid. It might be £3, £3.50 for a packet of seeds like that, unless you go to the right places, of course. And... Um, if already you're putting obstacles in the way of that seed to grow, you're not giving it the correct all-round coating of moisture, you're not allowing the seed to grow because you're putting lumps of compost on top of it, then you're hampering your germination and you're gonna get less plants for your money. And you know, you could move on later into maybe tropical gardening where you only get five seeds a packet or something. Um, so it's a good idea to get into good habits right at the start and for all of your gardening. So I use a sieve and I've got three types here. Uh, one is very fine, which I don't really need. One is in the middle and this is the one I use. The mesh on this is a quarter of an inch or about seven, getting on for eight millimeters. And all I do, pop that in, handful of compost on, and it takes little or no time to sieve all those lumps out and get rid of them. Now for the seed sowing itself, I've just filled a couple of trays here, three of them in fact, uh, with some of this sieve compost and I'm just gonna sow the seed straight on top. And this is, this one is Bedfordshire Champion. It's a very reliable onion and I had brilliant crops off them last year. Yeah, there's a ton of seeds going on here but I will get fresh for next year. These are last year's seeds. Now I'm putting the lot on simply because they are last year's seeds, so germination rates will be down. 
but that's as easy as to get. That's Bedford's champion. They just need a water. And these will now live on my um, kitchen windowsill until they start germinating. Then I'll fetch them back out here into the greenhouse. So that's number one. And the next one is one I haven't tried for a couple of years from seed because I had poor results. But I got three seeds from cover of a magazine. There we go. That's the... Uh, the crack there. You don't get many seeds in them, about 80 or 100 seeds, but that's Red Baron. Never had much luck with them, so I'll try them again. And I'm not going to try too many varieties this year, hopefully. And I have got another packet of these. I know these are Red Baron. These can all go in as well as a half packet here. So all those can go on there. And once they start to come up, you get little tiny, what looks like really thin blades of grass coming up. And then they'll bend over at the top. That's the crook stage. When you get to the crook stage, then you want to dibble them out and put them on into, into modules. Again, they'll live on the kitchen windowsill. And I've got more here. These are more freebies from covers of magazines. And this is Ailsa Craig. Good reliable onion if you can get them going. So this is my first sowing of onions. Um, I'll be sowing leeks shortly in a, over the next month. And I'll sow another batch of onions and they will all stay down in the polytunnel. So I'm hedging my bets really, so if the ones at home don't work, the ones at the polytunnel might. And that's what I find gardening is all about. Hedging your bets and making sure you've got what you want to grow. So there's three onions, the Elsa Craig, the Red Baron and the Bedfordshire Champion. There is one more I'm going to sow, couldn't find the seed this morning. When I find it, I'll sow it, but I'll find that over the next couple of days. So that's it, that's my first vegetable seed sown for the 2022 season. My onions, the Elsa Craig, the Red Baron and the Bedfordshire Champion. Um, there is one more to come when I can find the seed. It's, it's around somewhere in the house and we'll get that sown as soon as we can find it. But for now, I think, I think that's it. Do consider what I, what I said about using a soil sieve. It takes no time at all and it will pay you back at the end of the day. You'll get better germination you'll get stronger plants and you will actually save money down the road where you're buying when you start buying those seeds that you get very few for your money so it's worthwhile just doing it as standard yeah i know some seeds like you know beetroots and beans and things really don't need to be sieve soil but if you do it every time as standard it becomes habit and you don't really notice you're doing it, it takes no time and you get better results but that's it for this one Enjoy the rest of your Boxing Day, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Stay safe now. Ta-ra.